Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. And specifically we're going to discuss a really exciting new study that basically confirms that Triton seems to be a lost sibling of the most famous dwarf planet, Pluto. And specifically there are a lot of signs that not only do these objects appear to be kind of similar, they were also very likely formed in an extremely close proximity four and a half billion years ago. And so let's discuss these new discoveries in a little bit more detail, but I guess first let's actually discuss Triton, because as far as I know we haven't really talked about this object for a very long time. Now here's how Triton compares to planet Earth and to our own moon, and so it's actually not a small object. Not only is it the largest satellite of Neptune, it's also massive enough to basically assume a round shape and to even have a very thin atmosphere around itself. But unfortunately there's only been one mission that's ever seen Triton, taking pictures of Triton in the process. This was of course the Voyager 2 encounter. And though the pictures from Voyager 2 were obviously absolutely incredible, this was done back in the 80s. And so naturally the cameras back then were not as good. Nevertheless, during this flyby, quite a lot has been discovered about Triton, with a lot of things still even being learned today. For example, we're pretty certain it has a relatively complex atmosphere, composed mostly of nitrogen, but also some methane and carbon monoxide. And it also possesses unusual hazes of organic molecules that can even create clouds. Some of these clouds are approximately 4 kilometers in altitude, and though obviously barely visible, they're still there. And so technically, along with Titan, the moon of Saturn, Triton is the only other moon that's known to have a relatively complex atmosphere. But unlike Titan, the atmospheric pressure here is really low. It's about 70,000 times smaller than on the surface of planet Earth. But surprisingly, it's extremely similar to what we actually observe on Pluto. And we've learned quite a lot about Pluto during the New Horizons flyby in 2015. And so here the atmospheres are unusually similar, with both possessing very similar composition and even very similar effects when it comes to seasonal changes. But unlike Pluto, Triton also interacts with Neptune and as a result produces a lot of unusual effects around the Neptune system. For example, it produces a very large neutral hydrogen torus formation that basically resembles a kind of a donut cloud. Although very similar torus formations exist around other gas giants as well. The most famous one is around Jupiter, produced by Io. And this very likely also has effects on Neptune and specifically Neptunian aurora, but what effects exactly, we still don't know. And as I mentioned, this is actually a relatively large object, 2700 kilometers or 1700 miles across, making this one of the largest moons in the solar system, and actually a little bit larger and a little bit more massive than Pluto. And so if this was a dwarf planet, it would basically be the largest out there. But in terms of composition and density, it's once again extremely similar to Pluto. 2 grams per centimeter cube means that approximately 30 to 45 percent of everything here is water ice. But there are of course a few things that are kind of unusual. For example, its orbit around Neptune. As you can see right here, it seems to orbit in the opposite direction. It's essentially in retrograde orbit. Which already implies one simple thing. It's extremely unlikely to have formed around Neptune naturally. It was probably captured from somewhere else and assumed this orbit billions of years ago. And during these initial few millions of years after the capture, it's actually extremely likely that Triton experienced huge amounts of tidal heating, which kept Triton fluid for billions of years. But once its orbit stabilized and became circular, tidal heating dissipated as well and it basically froze over, at least for the most part. But the obvious question here is, what exactly happened here? Well, as you can probably imagine, this was some kind of a interplanetary capture. And there are currently two main explanations on how this probably happened. In the first explanation, approximately four and a half billion years ago, as planets started to migrate, something destabilized certain objects with sound of making their way toward the inner solar system. And one of them was Triton, that approached Neptune close enough, accidentally colliding with at least one of its moons. And that collision very likely decreased its velocity quite dramatically, placing it in retrograde orbit, which eventually stabilized over time. But the thing is, in this scenario, we would need to have some evidence, such as a massive crater somewhere on the surface. 
But because only a fraction of the surface has been studied so far, that's not something we have. But then there is a second scenario, which is actually a little bit more intriguing and potentially a little bit more likely. Here it suggests that this was probably a binary object, kind of like Pluto and Charon. And these binary objects are actually very common in the Kuiper's belt. And so as this binary system approached Neptune, the gravitational interaction broke apart this binary, with one of the objects being expelled somewhere else, but the other object staying behind, basically becoming this unusual moon. And so the case for Triton coming from somewhere else, and specifically from the Kuiper belt, seems to be pretty strong. But it wasn't until recently that researchers started to link this object to Pluto. So for example, unlike other moons, and actually unlike a lot of other objects, except for Pluto and a lot of Kuiper Belt objects, here we have an unusually high albedo, or basically this object reflects a lot of light. Just like so many icy objects or many different dwarf planets, it seems to reflect 60-90% to of sunlight, which makes Triton one of the coldest objects in the solar system. The temperature here is about 38 Kelvin or minus 235 Celsius, which is pretty cold but it's only about 3 degrees colder than Pluto. So even in terms of surface temperature, these objects are very similar. On top of this, both objects seem to show signs of a lot of geological activity that must have happened within the last 100 million years. For example, on both, we seem to observe a lot of dark material, usually organic compounds, that must have been ejected from within and must have come from some kind of an underground ice ocean. But in this recent study, where the scientists conducted a very thorough elemental analysis of Triton and Pluto, that they basically concluded that these objects have to be siblings and were most likely formed in an extremely similar environment. And here they essentially conducted a ratio analysis based on various elements that in essence shows us the overall composition of Triton and Pluto compared to everything else. And these two objects really stand out. Here the ratio of a lot of different elements seems to be practically identical, but quite different from other objects in the solar system. Which kind of implies that both objects must have formed in a very similar region and might have been even closely related prior to some kind of a separation, very likely based on the disturbance from larger planets. And so here both objects were formed in an extremely nitrogen-rich environment, containing similar compositions to a lot of different comets that seem to come from very similar faraway locations. They also both contain quite a lot of methane and carbon monoxide, which also very likely formed on the outskirts of the solar system. But I guess most importantly, because of their similarities, they must have formed extremely close, from basically an extremely similar material. Yet somehow Pluto stayed behind and still orbits in a similar location today, but for some reason Triton didn't. Triton was ejected and then caught by Neptune to become one of its moons. And assuming that this hypothesis is correct, and right now the evidence is pretty strong, this basically suggests that there should be more similar objects out there with very likely similar composition, similar structure, and a lot of other similarities orbiting around the solar system. And obviously some of them we have already found, for example Eris, which seems to be similar in size, composition, density, and a lot of other properties, but orbits much much farther away from everything else. But some of these objects are probably still hidden from us and will probably be discovered in the next few decades. And so for all we know, maybe all of these objects were basically formed in an extremely similar environment, but then got dislodged and kicked out by some kind of a major gravitational disturbance that happened in the early solar system for some unknown reasons. And what exactly this disturbance was is, I guess, the next question. Right now there is no answer, but for all we know, it could have been the mysterious Planet 9, possibly the migration of planets, although in this case it might not actually explain things like Eris right here, or possibly some kind of an interaction with a nearby massive star. And actually the evidence for this also exists in various ancient meteorites. You can actually learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And the thing is, we would have had the answer for this if someone launched a mission to this object in order to study the surface and of course a lot of other properties, providing us some of these answers. And NASA had one of these missions planned, it was actually supposed to launch in 2025, the mission known as Trident. But unfortunately, sometimes in 2021, NASA decided to focus on Venus instead of Neptune and Triton and basically postponed this mission indefinitely. Or basically it just didn't get picked 
and did not get any funding. It might still happen in the future, but it's not going to happen in 2025. One of the reasons why 2025 was picked is actually because during this time, Jupiter and Neptune are going to go through a specific alignment that happens every 13 years that allows for a much easier mission to this object by using the gravitational assist from Jupiter and from planet Earth. And the next such alignment is basically going to be in 2038. So yeah, we're probably not going to have any new missions until then. Nevertheless, these are still exciting studies just based on all of the evidence collected over the past few decades and almost definitively tell us that both Pluto and Triton seem to be unusually similar and are very likely lost siblings. But once we discover something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.